Hey guys, I am Lee Morris. I'm Patrick Hall. This is the next Critique the Community, and from now on, we're gonna be announcing what the next Critique is going to be about, and we're going to be giving you links so that if you guys are interested, you can submit your pictures right away. So the next Critique is going to be fine art photography, something that Patrick and I have no right to critique whatsoever. We might try to get Mike Kelly to do this one with us because he's been getting into uh, fine art photography. So if you're watching this on YouTube, check out the description. There'll be a link where to submit. If you're watching this on F-Stoppers in the post, there will be a link to a new post where you can submit the pictures. Very cool. Thank you everyone who submitted to this one. This one's landscape photography. This is like the biggest submissions ever, the most number of submissions. The most comments on any post of all time. Most submissions ever, most comments wow. ever. So uh, incredible, thank you so much for doing that. Um, sadly, we can only critique 20 shots or we'd be here all year. But with 20 shots, we're also gonna give away a free tutorial. Right. So, so this time you should name a number between one and 20. I'm gonna pick two. Two, all right, so, so we the can second remember. image that we review will uh, get, a free tutorial get a free tutorial of your choice. And uh, I'm also going to try this uh, alligator beef jerky. So you do that while if, I if you see me munching. Boot up the surface. I'm gonna try to eat some dinosaur. Ooh, that smells delicious. Are you eating reptile? Or? I, I have now been vegetarian for like Does this six count? months. Come yeah, on. it counts. Alligator? Is that a plant? You can get this at jerky.com. Maybe you're a jerk if you eat alligator. I don't know. It's chewy. All right, Patrick, are you ready to get down to business? Here is the first shot. I've seen this location before. Oh, you have? You've heard of this? No. I think there's a rock band that... All right. Three, two, one. Whoa, you give this a three. You gave that a two? Yeah. Man, that might be the best shot of Stonehenge I've ever seen. Can you think of a better Stonehenge shot than that? Yes. Really? I feel like most Stonehenge shots, like, they just look like they're on the side of the road. and I like that. I think that looks pretty cool. Interesting. I don't know. This feels... I feel like the uh, composition's a little straight and boring, like, but there's not a lot out there, so... There's not like a ton of foreground elements and that sort of thing. So it's like simple and clean, which might be a little weak for this. But like, I love the sky. I love that the, you know, the sun's setting behind it. Um, it feels over-processed to me. It feels very HDR-ish. And like, the, really? yeah, the blacks are in the stones are really crushed, but there's still so much detail in the shadows. It just looks really fakey to me. I like the long exposure on the sky and stuff, but um, I don't know. I just, if, if this was the first picture on somebody's website, I would, I would have negative thoughts about them immediately. I don't think it looks that HDR. Like it doesn't look like the cheap, cheap bracketed HDR to me. It has some contrast to it. I just think Stonehenge probably isn't that photographic to begin with. So like for this shot, I think this could be one of the best shots of it I've ever seen. Top of Google. I, I agree, I wouldn't put this on the first image of my website, but I don't think that this is that bad. Like it's a three, it's, it's not, I'm not blown away by it, but it's an image that I think if you take landscapes, it could go on your Instagram and be in your portfolio. All right, let's move on. This is the winner here. Congratulations, uh, you get the choice of whatever tutorial you want. Uh, we will put directions on how to get the free tutorial. I think this guy's definitely gonna choose Joey Wright's swimwear tutorial. <laughs> That's yeah. the one he's gonna pick. Yeah. All right, you ready? Three stars, it's, it's an okay, solid shot to me. Solid means it's like ready for a portfolio. You could make money doing this sort of thing. Um, feels very, monochromatic. Uh, I, I imagine this is just a super long exposure at night or because the stars aren't moving, it's not a super long exposure, but maybe it's a long exposure on the foreground and you don't pick up that much color at night. See, I think they've done a lot to this. Oh, I think they've done a lot to it, but, but, but do you think it's like a nighttime sky put over a daytime image of this? Perhaps, because like, look at the light on the mountain mm -hmm. and the only way you would get that is if the moon is out or they've blended in some late, like the sun might have already set, but they got, 
and I assume this is a really northern place, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. So it probably has the, the sun setting like low on the horizon. This probably gets like, I grew up in Alaska and a lot of times you get like 18 hours of darkness and then in the summer you get 18 hours of daylight. So I would bet that they've blended in a few different exposures here. It's not just a long night moonshot. I bet the, the stars blur like composited and I bet you this is a few different frames. I look over here like this is bright on the right side of the frame but then the light on the mountain is coming from like a different direction. Yeah, but if you look at the far mountains on the back left, they are the brightest thing. So I'm going to bet that the moon is camera left and it's lighting this realistically. I'm not saying that no post-processing was done, but whoever shot this, write in the comments, let us know who's correct. I feel like the, uh, the framing or the composition, like the sky is so big, but the horizon's kind of low, but then you have these cool foreground elements and you have some leading lines. Like there's a lot going on, I just feel like it's not, it's almost like the camera position isn't quite perfect. Right. But it's close, it's a great camera angle, but I feel like you could kind of scout just the littlest bit and make it a little stronger, but I kind of like the monochromatic look to this. Next up. This starts to get really tough to me. Really tough. All right, I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one. I gave it a three. I was leaning towards potentially a two just because it's so simple and stuff. But at the same time, you go into art galleries, especially up north, and they'll have pictures like this, and they look really pretty in picture frames, you know? I think this is a great example of kind of doing the opposite of what somebody like Elia Licardi does, where it's this epic scene and everything's perfect and it's the postcard. This is a little more subdued. Like, it's, this might be your backyard, but this is the most beautiful version of your backyard. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's a nice mood. It's not the shot of the most famous mountain in your state or your country. Like you said, it could just be your backyard, but like the mood of this is really pretty. And so therefore it could make a nice print. I feel like the post-production is pretty <clears throat> solid. Like yeah. nothing's glaringly standing out like as being wrong or anything. Yeah. All right, next up. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Two stars. Needs work before it hits your portfolio. To me, it's just the subject matter. I mean, it's a relatively pretty sunset or sunrise, but like nothing's going on here. Yeah. The, the subject is the sunset and the reflection. Yeah. And if it could be done in a way to where I feel like that it would be very difficult to take a picture of a sunset and a reflection that wows you unless the environment was just super, super unique. I mean, yeah. this looks like it could be in Charleston, you know? It's like, well, this is what we see out of our backyard. Not that it's not pretty, but it's, you know, there's nothing really going on. It's just kind of... Yeah, and if, uh, if you're going to put a picture in your portfolio, I think it needs to be special in some way yeah. for these potential clients to see. To me, this just kind of feels like, oh, look at the pretty sunset. Like, let me pull my phone out and capture it. It's not, it's a fine capture. Subject matter is just not that exciting. I always like to look at these and figure out if we know where these places are. I'm trying to even recognize these buildings. I think we've been to this city. Oh, is this Singapore? Yeah, it's Singapore shooting back the other way. Um, it looks like, is this the Louis Vuitton store on the left? Yeah, and so I'm, I'm a guessing what is the, the little statue that spits at you? Somewhere down here? I don't know, but then I don't recognize that thing. Maybe, is this Singapore? <laughs> I don't know. We don't know where it is, but it's kind of cool. You ready? Uh, yeah. Three, two, one. Three stars, solid. I feel like we're on the same page again. In the last critique of community, we kind of- I think he read the YouTube comments and you've, you've come to your senses. I have not come to my senses. Well, then you were wrong. We're about to get exciting here. All right. Um, solid shot, nice black and white. Love the long exposure on the water and on the sky. I think it makes it interesting. Very interesting choice with the um, foreground. Yeah, or? with the foreground element of this dock, centering it like that. I don't think I ever would have done that, but uh, it's working for me. What's nice about the composition here is that I think a lot of photographers would go right to the edge of the dock, and then you'd be left with this like boring water foreground, 
yeah. and you would think it's clean and simple, but it, this probably adds more to the photo because of it. I think it does. All right, next up. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. And I think you already know what I'm going to say. I'm going to compare this to the Stonehenge image, and this to me is bad HDR. Like, this yes. looks like you've put it, is it Photo Matrix or one of those? Photo Mechanic? Not Photo Mechanic, but it's the one that oh, adds yeah. all of the... It merges all the pictures together? Yeah. Or you take it into Photoshop and you do the shadow highlight and you go like 100% both ways? This looks like that, whereas the first image we critiqued does not have that feel to me. Maybe it's, it's in that realm, but this is, this is too much. Yeah. Um, interesting location. I just feel like the post-processing is uh, too over the top to put this in your portfolio. Next up. It's really interesting. If I had seen this, a shot like this a few years ago, like I wouldn't even know what to think about it. I wouldn't know, like, is this real? Does it look like this in real life? But then after going to Iceland with Elia, getting to see this with my own eyes, getting to take pictures and have it look like this, like on the back of the camera without post-processing, I have a totally different view of these images now. And I don't know if that means I rate them more critically, right. or if I'm a little bit more lenient, I'm not sure. I'm ready. Yeah. Three, two, one, three stars. Um, Some things that distract me. I feel like the city is too blown out, but there's not much of a city there. Um, I feel like it's really hard for me to say this, but I feel like this location just isn't that interesting. Like it's pretty, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we definitely took some time lapses in Iceland that looked very similar to this. And I don't know that I would rate them higher than threes, to be honest. Well, yeah. Like they were okay. Yeah, People liked them, but like right they weren't. That. I think what made ours more interesting is that they were moving time lapses. Yeah. So you're you're really just watching the sky. And dance you put around. them in an edit, and suddenly you move on to the next one. You move on to the next one. But yeah. this, I feel like this was better than a single frame of our time lapse. But there's just something about it to where like maybe I either don't. I want the city to be diminished even more so that it feels like you're in the middle of nowhere, or I want the city to be bigger. That's probably not a fair critique because that's what this place looks like. Um, th I keep getting distracted by this one little like slope on the right hand side. Hmm. I feel like if you just cropped the in, bottom right, if you just cropped in a little bit and like got rid of that, may maybe that would. It doesn't help a lot, but it's. I a didn't little... even notice that until you said it. What's What's kind of messing with me a little bit is the the shade of the trees, at least on this tablet we're looking at. It looks so black. Doesn't it look like the blacks are crushed in the trees on the bottom? Yeah, well, just kind of all over the mountains. It just like it looks like the contrast is a little bit too high to me, and I'd like to see just a little bit more detail in the dark. What do you feel about the uh, like the magentas and the whites? Is that a good contrast with the green, or is that somehow trying to? They post processed this in a way to remove the green from the mountains, and the green led to magenta. Should this be less saturated or? I like it. Like I mean, my contrast. favorite part of the whole thing is probably this large mountain on the right side that has the the warm reflection from the city kind of yeah. hitting the mountain. I think that looks awesome. And then I see the magenta and like the mountains on the right, but then on the left, you'll notice that there's green reflecting from the sky in the mountain. So to me, it works. If you just made it all black and white, I think that would make this look horrible. I guess what I'm, I'm just thinking the mountains on the right probably looked more like the mountains on the left. Oh, you think? But in, a, well, I mean, they're still having the green cast on them, and I don't know how much of the city is lighting the whole scene. It's kind of hard to say, but. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean. It's definitely an image that the majority of people that scroll through your portfolio are going to be like, oh, wow, like the Northern Lights. It's a cool location. It's, you know. It's, it's a solid three, but I don't know. I'm, I'm having trouble coming up with the things that you should do to push this to a four. Well, then let's move to the next shot. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. You get one, three. Oh, you want I four? I want four, yeah. I, um, I'm digging this a lot, and I, f I find this to be by far the most interesting shot we've seen so far.
I could probably say that. The thing that I don't like about this image is I just want this road to read in a very clear manner. Hmm. And I feel like it gets a little sloppy in the middle. And I don't know if you could even take that shot. Maybe it's a drone up higher and then you could never get enough frames to do the post-production. But I just feel like I've seen shots where the road, I mean, we were in one in, uh, where was it, in New Zealand at the very bottom uh, where we got ate by the bugs. Where was Milford that? Sound. Milford Sound has a road that's very similar to this where you can see all the way down. And I feel like the road is kind of the subject matter of this. That's what makes this image interesting. But it's also just laid out in the photo in a way that's kind of not perfect. I understand. I mean, obviously, the photographer couldn't do anything with that. The, the sloppy part to me feels like above and to the right of this road, it seems oddly dark Dark back there. Like, like it, it makes me feel like these trees on the left that are lit so well have been painted in from another frame or something. They and probably, then maybe they have been. Right, but it, it There just of, wasn't a frame where the light was hitting this other ridge. Yeah. To paint that in as well. Yeah. And then, and then the way that the, something about this shot just doesn't really make sense to me from a lighting standpoint. And I would imagine that's because it's fake, but, uh, and by fake, I just mean blended frames, but it appears that the sun is going down behind these uh, mountains. But then the light's coming from. It looks like the light's coming from camera right. And then you have these headlights that you would expect to be like shining on different parts of the scene, but they're not really. So that's kind of strange. But when I just look at this as like a viewer, I really like it. Yeah. So that's why I gave it a four. All right, next up. Mm, I remember seeing this on F-Stoppers yesterday. And uh, this one, this one's tough for me. I can't remember what I rated it yesterday because <laughs> I'm in between numbers and I probably was yesterday as well. All right. Three, two, one. Really? I was in between a three and a four for this. I feel like this goes back to the genre. Yes. And I feel like yes. if this was in the next critique where it's fine art, yep. I would rate this very different than landscape. Yep. And it's cool. I just don't know that if you put this in a... If you had 200 pictures on your Instagram feed and that is your portfolio and every image is polished and perfect and it shows the world off, this image to me would be a two in that to sort of portfolio. For that sort of portfolio maybe, but like... You know, you take you take this biker out of this shot, and it's a one. It's like I despise this shot. Yeah. You put that biker in there. Now I'm thinking about giving it a four, which is so interesting that that little guy can can make such a change. I find it really interesting. I find it graphic, and f it's working for it me. It just pushes me more in the commercial fine art realm than like. I don't know that I'd want this blown up large and put in my room. Maybe, maybe See, I, I could. Think I think I maybe, would. Because it's more subtle. I don't like. I don't like really colorful, bright landscape pictures hung as art in my home. This is the type of stuff. That you I wouldn't I, buy a Peter Lick and uh, some of his stuff. Some of his stuff I like, but like. It's over the top. It's over the top. It's yeah. so neon colored and everything. I like more subdued stuff like this in my house. Next up. I feel like this is one I might have to really like zoom in and dig in because, oh, all right, I think I'm ready. All right, three, two, one, really? I think three, five is where this sits to me. I love this. Like, it's a little, like we were just talking about, over the top in the sense that like it's a very, saturated, perfectly kind of edited thing. Uh -huh. um, I just like the skies are dark. I like moody shots. And I know we'd go out with a lie and he'd get weather like this and he'd be like, oh, the sky's bad. Like, I don't want to deal with it, you know? I think this happened in uh, Hong Kong over and over again. And I love those shots. I like it to look mysterious and dark and this just looks eerie. I feel like there could be something in the post-processing. I can't put my finger on it. 
that keeps me in the 3.5 range. Yes. But I love the composition. I love this location. I love the sky. I love little hints of light. Um, I think the light on the mountains with the light being way in the background give enough of an impression that this could be a real lighting event, even if this was somehow bracketed and taken over multiple hours or something. Um, I like it. I think, I mean, three, five, but I figured you'd probably go three. All right, so here's here's my deal. This is one of my more favorite images I've seen in this critique. It is mine too, but there's just something weird going on with these rocks. Like, foreground, I love it. I think that water looks is it that amazing. They, are the rocks soft? Is it like a depth of field sharpness thing? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I'm talking about like the rock walls here. It, it, it almost looks like there's been some sort of like uh, softening filter added or something. And I don't know if it's hazy back there. I don't know if it's misty back there and that's what I'm seeing. But something is going on with these rock walls and I feel like oh, I just want them to be a little super sharp and crunchier yeah. and like I want to see the light beams hitting them more clearly. I think that's exactly what it was I couldn't put my finger on. Like, it's exactly that. I feel like the mountains aren't quite sharp enough or like you said, it's hazy there or it was misfocused and they tried to you know, save the image because yeah. something is going on like that. Yeah, but I love the foreground and the sky has so much potential. Like, that's so cool, those rolling clouds like that. Would you, just because this is so dramatic, would you paint in a little warmth into any of these lighter parts of the clouds to try to bring the cloud into the mix a little bit better? Or do you like that it's so dramatic with the hint of warm sky? And the, I think, and the I think and it the... could be nice if you could add a, like some hint of yellow on those clouds. It's very difficult with this genre of photography because you never know where the line is, where you've yeah. crossed that line into like, it's not even real anymore. You just, you know, paint it on it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I feel like I feel like the reason why the foreground looks so good is because it has this snaking S shape of, of yellow reflection in between the blue. It looks amazing. And then the sky has potential, but it's just kind of like this blob up there. Another thing I like about this image, though, is where they have the camera, I feel like I'm there. Like, I know what it would be, what it would feel like to be in this river with these, like, cliffs on either side. You know, where a lot of the other images we've seen, they're pretty, but you don't get the sense of, like, I'm there, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. This, I feel like, and I think it's just because so much of the landscape is towering up over you. Mm -hmm. I really like that element in, in this photograph. All right, let's move on. Ready? I think so. This one's tough. Three, two, one. I gave this one a four. Um, I can see why you would do that. Here, here's my prejudice with this. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of photographers do it. We've taught this with Elia. I don't know that I'm a huge fan of the whole Star Trail thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I love the technique. I like knowing how to do it. And when you see it and you're there and you see the stars like you've never seen before, it never looks like this in person, but. I get it, like, it's a cool technique, but like, it's kind of like you saying some of these images are so vibrant you never put them on your wall. Yeah. To me, that's the star trail thing. I yeah. would rather have just stars. I don't know if that's fair because people do love the look of this, but to me that always kind of, it'd be hard for me to say there's a five star image that has this effect on it, just because I don't personally dig it that that's much. Fair. I, I gave this a four star, not because of the sky. I just think these mountains look Oh, Fantastic. I want to go to this location. <laughs> like that place looks crazy. And and just the way that they've captured just a hint of this yellow and orange light on the tips of each of these mountains, it looks great. These are the Southern Alps of Italy, right? Definitely. All right, next up. How many shots under a pier like this have you seen before? This is the first one. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? This one's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a pier that had the, the pylon in the middle, yeah, in the very back. So that makes ugly. it unique. It's interesting. Even Peter Lick has a shot like this, and uh, I do not like it. I'm a big fan of Peter Lick's work, but I'm like, That's Peter, the last why, place you'd why hang would out? you do that? All right. Um, all right. I'm going to three, two, one. I still gave it a three. You did too. I, I, I feel like there's something really artistic and painterly about this. 
I usually hate under peer pictures. I've taken them too, so I'm being critical of myself. I think it's done really, really well. Um, it's a little more telephoto, like just slightly, than what I probably would be used to seeing. But the thing for me, like I just don't like, I'm like you, I don't like under the peer photos. And then this one, it's like these peers are so old and I don't think that these are like oysters or mussels. Like, I don't know what's going on. It's like there's concrete or something. They're so non-uniform, which might give it more character, but it just makes it in the way that it's rounded. Every archway is rounded, which seems kind of strange for a pier. It just seems like this is built in a different way, and I don't know that this is like a pretty, this isn't like a pretty thing that I want to experience on a daily basis if I was going to hang it on my wall. See, now, the reason why I might argue with you is because it's so strange looking. When I look at this, I don't really see a pier shot like everybody else's. I see kind of just pretty colors. So this is why I might want to hang something like this on my wall. What about the fact that the photographer didn't even get centered? See how he's like off to the right, kind of shooting more to the left and like it's not symmetrical. I almost think, and, and this is going to completely destroy the idea of this photo, but if you could back up and shoot a little more telephoto, I think the most interesting thing is this with like no peripheral sky. Like you're seeing pylon, 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 pylon. This almost looks like you're in a cave now. I find this to be the most interesting part of the photo is the very center. And then when I zoom back out, I'm just like, Oh yeah, another pier shot like everyone's done. I, I agree that cropping in really hard gives it a totally different look, but all of a sudden to me... Maybe it's not a landscape at all. It feels like some sort of Greek mythology, you know, craziness. When I zoom out, it's like, oh, okay, we're at the beach or whatever. So it, sh it changes the shot. Maybe you like it more. I personally like it wider. I wish the photographer had centered it up a little Where bit. Where is the, so are you looking at this distance in here? Or I'm looking you, at these distances. Oh, I see. So like between the, the nearest pier and the second nearest, nearest pier, there's a big. Well, and then, and then just look at, if you look all the way at the end, the hole in the back, it's not in the center of the frame. It's like pushed off to the right. Yeah, but that could just be that like, oh, you're saying the center. Yeah. Not the, the center pylon. Right. All right, next up. Ready? You're making me change my mind I without know. saying a word. I shouldn't have zoomed in. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> this is definitely a two. <laughs> Three, Three, two, two one. one. I was going to give it a four. I was definitely going to give it a four. And then I just started noticing a few things, and I'm like, eh, it's a little sloppy. Like, at the beginning, I, I kind of thought like, oh, maybe that sky's real. And then you start zooming in and you look up by this tree up here and you're like, oh, they put a fake sky in. And then you look at the edge around the mountain and it's just like a little sloppy. Um, this tree over here, like the, this big tree on the left, they notice both, how it's so bright. They both do this. You're talking about like right here where the tree meets the mountain and it's, then on the right side where the tree goes above the tree yeah. line. You can tell that like there's all this light and shadow highlight or something on the bottom of the trees, but then they go into shade on the top. So basically, I feel like this photographer knows exactly what they're doing. They just got a little lazy with this shot and we're just like, ah, let's put it together. And the truth is, for a lot of commercial clients, they're going to love this. Yeah. this. This looks amazing. Like... I love people in landscape shots. Yeah, me I mean, too. I remember telling Elia, this cave shot, you got to go stand in the shot. Like, we got to do something different. And I think having the human element adds a lot to it. Um, I love this kind of stuff. And it, it almost could start to fit into advertising, too. You take a shot like this and you put a tent there and some supplies and you have a little couple that looks good. And like, it's kind of mixing genres, you know? Like, you have the landscape, but then you have the people in there. And then if this is you, like, I could. I kind of would like an image on the wall where I'm like a small part of the image. Yeah, that's cool. It's kind of neat. I agree. All right, next up. Where you're, you're from where? You went to school in North Carolina? Yep, in Banner Oak, North Carolina. Could this be? This looks like it's up there, you know, next to the parkway. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. 
Two stars, needs work before it hits your portfolio. This is one of these type of shots that I might hang on my wall. I do not like the bottom left green tree. That kind of pulls me out of the shot and you could just bit. like lasso that and change the color <laughs> of the green Hue slider to over. make it look like all of the rest. Yeah. And I think that would make a huge difference Yeah, in the realm of still being a two. Like, I just feel like, and I, I like telephoto shots. Like I like doing something different than shooting super wide. And this isn't, I don't know how telephoto this is, but it's, it has potential. I just feel like the lighting's a little boring. The shots just, it's so simple, you know, but this is the type of image that in fine art, somehow the right person, this is like a big seller. And you're like, how? It's all has to do with like the mood and the framing and the showroom that you put it in. This is the type of stuff that I would like in my house. Like you don't walk by it and go like, oh, where is that or whatever. It's just a nice, pretty, calming mood that doesn't draw your attention too much, but it kind of livens up the room. So for fine art, I might rate it a little higher, but for landscape, probably shouldn't put it on your website as it is. Now this shot looks a little soft to me, but I don't know if that's because it was pulled off of f-stoppers. I don't know what's going on. This is a tough one, but I'm ready. Three, two, one. There is something about this and the color, like that hint of blue in the upper left, turning into orange and then yellow and then back to like this The magenta. color is great on this. Oh my gosh, so much potential. Um, to me, it's all just like subject matter, composition. It's just, it's too simple. It, it's like... This is a shot I feel like I've probably taken many times where I'm on the side of the road and I'm leaving or I'm coming in and I see the light and I'm like, that's awesome. And I stop and I pull the tripod out and I take this picture. And then like when I get back, I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's a little boring. It's a horizon with the water. The light's kind of the only thing in the fact that it's snowy and it's, ex ex it's an exotic location for many people. I just feel like without that lighting effect, that sunset, there's just not a whole lot there. I'm currently trying to like crop this image. I feel like the weakest part of the image is the bottom, is the bottom, but also the right side. Like this little town over here, the lighting's not very pretty on it. This could be one where you take a telephoto and you like really go in and just make it all about those mountains and like a few of the little islands and you know, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what I would do. I was also looking at some sort of like square crop, you know, where you like cut the edges off. I don't know. Um, so I don't think it's totally fair to give a two. Like, like we said, we have these numbering systems and the idea is the community would all vote and then it would average out. Mm -hmm. It's a three to two. So I think 2.3, 2.5 is perfect for me, but I don't know if you just had a bunch of awesome landscapes and then you came to this one, I think you would be like, oh, yeah, it's like they didn't quite find the location or the composition Yeah. in this instance. But man, you, you get that crazy looking hazy sky with that color and put it with the crazy foreground, it would yeah. be unbelievable. <clears throat> Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. To this, this to me kind of feels like a, a frame pulled out of a movie or something. It doesn't, it doesn't really feel like a complete. That much thought was put into the composition. Um, I, obviously, I love the god rays and the fog and everything. Like that looks cool, but then this little guardrail down at the bottom creeping into the frame. It just, it just feels like a, it feels like a snapshot of the god rays that I would like take and send to my wife. Like, oh, look at this. Like, it looks cool, but I, I don't think I'd put yeah, this on Yeah, it wasn't website. like you, and I feel like this is what most landscape photographers do. You go to the location, you scout it, you find the composition, you lock the camera down, and then, like, in the back of your mind, you're hoping to get some amazing light event. Mm -hmm. And this does not have any of that. This is like, I saw the lighting event, right. and then, oh, I just happened to be on the side of the road with this ugly guardrail, and, like, there's no real composition here. Um, 
there's just overall, there, besides those rays, there's nothing of real interest here. And I think that just knocks it to a two. Next up. Hmm. I think I've seen this on F-Stoppers recently. I don't know that I have. This is the image that I would want to be in. I'd want to be doing <laughs> my jump shot up there, and then you would be like, wait, what? Yeah. There's a guy up there? Like, because yeah, you be really cool. have a hard sense of scale with this. I'd want to be kiteboarding and like jumping. Oh, in. that would be sick. I mean, that would be like a, in a <laughs> Red Bull Illume photo. Problem is, what makes this so cool is the long exposure. So you wouldn't be able to get a jump shot, and I wouldn't be able to get a kiteboarding shot here, but... Um, you can still composite in a shadow of me jumping. It's fake then, man. All right. Three, two, one. Four stars, excellent image. Is this the best image we've seen in this critique? Uh, one of them? So, so, well, of course. I mean, I think I only gave one other one a, a four. A four. Um, what I love about this, and I'm a little cynical with landscapes, is that I've never seen this location. Yeah, I don't know where this is. I get is. kind of tired seeing the same pictures in the same countries, and we are probably guilty of helping perpetuate <laughs> that too. But like, I love that I have no idea. Like, if I had to guess, this is New Zealand or Australia or somewhere that's got just crazy rock formations. Um, I don't think there's much more to say. It looks pretty awesome. Hmm. I think Aliyah has shot this balloon event, right? Well, there's one in, is it Bhutan? Is that the name of the country? Bhutan. Bhutan. I can never pronounce any location <laughs> right ever. It's Galway, Galway, Bhutan, Bhutan. Um, I don't think this is there, right? Because it has all the temples and everything. I don't know. It's easy for know. me to see balloon events <laughs> and then just think like it only happens in one place. <laughs> That's true. All right. Three, two, one. I'm, I was in between a two and a three on yeah, this one. Yeah. I feel like the light's nice because it's off to the side, but I'm trying to, in my mind, imagine if you could have shot this even later and had more shadows and highlights on the left mm -hmm. and got something. I mean, I know the sky is clear, but I just feel like there's something with the time of day and the contrast that just makes it a little bland. I agree. It makes it feel more like a snapshot, even though I feel like the photographer put a lot of thought into this composition. Well, and the other, the other big thing is like, this event may be over in an hour right. when the best light is there, you know? Exactly. And so like, this was all you could do. Um, and who knows if all those balloons are actually there, like, you know, you can do a lot with this type of imagery in terms of composition and blending things in, but... Um, it's definitely exotic. It's a place like, I don't know where this is. You said this is Turkey. Um, I love some of the light over here on the right with the road and some of the dust and stuff. Like there's little yeah. places where things are going really well, mm -hmm. but then on the left, especially the bottom left, it's just kind of like, man, I almost want that burned in or I want it even warmer and like subdued, you know, in some way. All right, next up. We've been here. I've stood on this exact rock. <laughs> I think you had a GoPro kicked right here. <laughs> I something. did. Um, all right. Three, two, one. I gave it a three. What is the weakest part of this whole image? I, um, I feel like the post-processing is a little sloppy in areas. Um, if you look at, like, there's, there's like, halos... Little ones, not bad, but just around this sky that's been composited in from another. That's an Elia Lacardi image. This is an Elia Lacardi image? <laughs> is it really? <laughs> uh, Damn you, David and Chelsea, whoever was responsible for that. Well, Elia, I'm, 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 I'm sticking to it. I feel like it's a little sloppy around the edge. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the, uh, the, trees up here and I can see this halo and it's kind of bumming me out a little bit. My favorite part of this shot. The water? The water and the rocks. I feel like that looks great. I, I feel like he went a little crazy on the, to me the whole left sky is, is like, 
too much like it's got a slight HDR like I don't know I just I feel like that sun throws me off I want it to be darker and I know the sky is bright with the sun but I want it to be like darker more black the mountain to be more black and the city itself is so dark in this shot like is this a newer or older version of... Wouldn't it be funny if this was in the tutorial that we filmed him taking this and this we've just forgotten? This isn't how it is. I, I want to... But I don't know if this is his first attempt at this or this is like a newer attempt. I don't think this is his best attempt. I've seen his shot from here and it looks... He has one better than this. Yeah. So I don't know how this image got in if it's like this is his last trip and, you know... One thing that bothers me that I wish he would have done is this new... This building that's been repainted here on the corner, the red one... I feel like that light, like he's really good about suppressing blown lights and stuff. And I feel like in this image, I go right to the middle of the corner of that building. Yep. So Alaya, step it up. We're about to like travel with him soon. So like we gotta we gotta stay on top of him. I with know, these we things. can't be having these halos. Yeah. Next up. Ready? Uh <laughs> three, yeah. two, one. Three stars, solid image. This is toned different than anything we've seen so far. Yeah. And I like that. It's it's just, I like I like when people don't follow all the trends. And maybe this was a trend 20 years ago. I don't know, like this style. I love this muted, the blacks aren't crushed. I mean, they are crushed, but it's like you've taken the level and you pulled the black so it's not hitting zero. It's mm -hmm. like at 15. What's your opinion of these ducks? Do you think the ducks need to come out? No. I mean, I think without the ducks, I think this is weaker. Really? But I don't know that the ducks are perfect either. It's like, I wish this little duck here had his head sideways too. Oh yeah, the swans feel great, but if the ducks weren't there, maybe the, the swans would feel too centered. It would feel a little... I think it's fairly balanced. Well, um, the ducks, I think, help that. All right, Chelsea's telling us these are Canadian geese and not ducks. As I said in the last, I think these are, uh, races, these are these are wooden so. wooden decals. <laughs> these are just floating there. These aren't even real. Well, they're Canadian floating decals. Decoys, decoys. decoys. <laughs> Why are we saying decals? Decoys. All right, let's move on. There's one more. Now this shot looks soft to me too. Do you know, is this because, like... Well, zoom in like, on his watermark. That's the Like, easiest. the watermark looks kind of soft, too. Like he up So maybe it's just a low-res image. It seems like he uploaded a low-res shot. Well, you shouldn't... I mean, upload high-res images so that they look yeah. good on the, sm on the monitors. Yeah. And don't pick low-res shots, Chelsea. David that one. Oh, David, who's not here right now, don't do that. Um, this is tough, man. <laughs> this is really tough. This is where people are going to leave all their comments on. Three, two, one. So I was in between a two and a three. Here's the thing. This totally feels to me like, like an award-winning image of an old photographer. Like he shot this like... Back when we weren't used to seeing. 25 image. years ago on film and he waited for this moment, you know, and it's like not only... Is this shot number one in his portfolio? But like he's got prints of it, and it's in the local museum. He's selling prints of it to the local people in the town, and they got it hung up in their mountain mansions. Like that, I'm I'm gaining all of this from this from like the look of this shot. You're very insightful. Or I'm just completely making stuff up. But um, when I when I look at this today as like a modern image, I lean towards a two, and like no, you shouldn't put that in in your portfolio i think it's just not interesting enough like it's a mountain there's not a lot going on there's this weird thing going on for me that makes this interesting and that's the top of the mountain i know like i can look at it and i can just tell that it's the sun barely hitting the tips but when you look at it quickly it's like is this a volcano or is the mountain on fire and the clouds kind of give that impression and so I know what's happening, but my mind keeps wanting to make it bigger and more interesting than maybe what it really is. Yeah. But in general, I just feel like, I mean, the exposure, the, like, the post-processing, everything looks good. I just feel like it's not that exciting 
of a composition and mountain range and it's one of those that's like, yeah, I caught the best moment of this location I could have, but that location itself isn't that spectacular. Yeah. But if you live there, like you said, like if you live there and this mountain has a name and like this is like what we stare out at our backyard. It's like, like, can't you see this on a postcard? Yeah, like this is a postcard image of that location, but right. it's just kind of like it. But maybe if you could get it, like if imagine if all the other mountains were painted and like you really used lighting to embellish this even more, maybe this could look like some of the other solid threes or three and a halfs that we've rated. But with it all being in shade and just the top of the mountains, I feel like, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's not enough. Agreed. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm very thankful that we didn't rate Elias' secret picture like a one or a two. That would have been embarrassing for all of us. But, um, I think, I think we've learned a lot. If you guys are interested in submitting to the next critique, make sure you check out the description and the link for that. And uh, check out fstoppers.com slash store to check out our full-length photography tutorials, including our three-star photographer, Elia Licardi. You want the alligator jersey? No. 